This is KGW News at Noon. The harsh reality is we are managing a scarce resource right now. I wish, I wish we had more vaccines to give. Well, you heard it here on KGW moments ago. Governor Kate Brown addressing her decision to vaccinate teachers and school staff before most senior citizens. It's a decision some are criticizing her for. She says the problem is there just isn't enough vaccine. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Governor Brown says she is using every tool she has to get students back into the classroom this school year. Health officials say if we vaccinated every Oregon senior first, then many of our educators wouldn't get vaccinated this school year. However, this past week, Oregon did finish giving first dose vaccinations to all seniors who wanted them in nursing homes and long term care settings. Health officials say the lack of vaccine has led to tough decisions on who to prioritize. I want to be very, very clear. I have prioritized protecting seniors since day one of this response. And as a result, Oregon is faring better than nearly every other state in the nation in protecting our vulnerable seniors. Governor Brown says Oregon has the second lowest COVID infection rate among seniors in the country. Health officials also say as of January 20th, Oregon has vaccinated two thirds of those in the 1A group. That's a week ahead of schedule. Well, Oregon has several mass vaccination sites for people in that group 1A. They're at the state fairgrounds in Salem, the Oregon Convention Center, and a new drive through that just opened at the Portland Airport. Then on Monday, three of Portland's big hospital systems will join Kaiser Permanente at the Oregon Convention Center. That's a joint effort between Kaiser, OHSU, Legacy and Providence. They'll administer 2000 shots a day until they get more vaccine. Um, one other note today, OHSU is closing its drive through testing at the convention center and at Hillsboro Stadium. Instead, it'll host drive through vaccinations at PDX in the airport's red lot. You know, much like what we're doing at the convention center, where, you know, we're, we're building the infrastructure and the capability to do to operate every day for months. That is what we're we're doing at the um, Portland Airport in partnership with Red Cross. To get into the Oregon Convention Center, you do need to have an appointment. In the meantime, the state of Washington will open four mass vaccination sites there. The closest one to us is the Clark County Fairgrounds in Ridgefield. Officials are pretty confident that that will open up on Monday. For now, to get the vaccine anywhere though, you do need to be in that group 1A. Now to the first 100 days of President Biden's term. The Senate just confirmed his second cabinet member. General Lloyd Austin is the new Pentagon chief. He'll make history as the nation's first black secretary of defense. He served 41 years in the U.S. Army. General Austin came to work shortly after his confirmation. He was seen walking into the Pentagon this morning. We have some new details this noon about how President Biden plans to help people struggling financially because of the pandemic. NBC's Tracy Potts has more on the next steps. The nation waiting for action. Let me be President clear. Biden offering hope. Help is on the way. And a warning. We're still in a dark winter of this pandemic. It's going to get worse before it gets better. He's predicting half a million COVID deaths by next month. This executive order I'm signing. Rolling out two new orders today to provide economic relief. One expands food stamps and other government assistance, including direct payments to the neediest Americans. It pauses debt payments for veterans and underscores the right to turn down jobs that put a person's health at risk. The second order establishes a $15 minimum wage for federal workers. The White House says he's eager to work with Republicans. They're looking for engagement. They're looking to have a conversation. They're looking to have a dialogue. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But Republicans question the president's priorities. The president can and should refocus his administration on creating good paying American jobs. And the price tag. We have to get serious about how we're spending taxpayer dollars. We already have more than $27 trillion in federal debt. 
Biden wants millions vaccinated quickly. Getting 100 million people vaccinated in the first 100 days is quite a reasonable goal. But at least a dozen states say they don't have enough vaccine. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. The article of impeachment against former President Trump will arrive in the Senate on Monday. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer made that announcement this morning. Donald Trump is accused of inciting an insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. House Speaker Pelosi says there must be a trial and accountability. Republican leader Mitch McConnell wanted to postpone the trial until February, saying it would give Trump's team more time to prepare his defense. Baseball great Hank Aaron has died. He played in the major leagues for 23 seasons and eclipsed Babe Ruth as the home run king. Aaron hit 755 homers in his career and held that record for more than 30 years. He was also one of the last MLB stars to have played in the Negro Leagues. Hank Aaron was 86 years old. Here's a traffic alert for you this afternoon. I-405 will close tonight at 10 o'clock from Highway 26 to the Fremont Bridge. Crews are putting in a new bike and pedestrian bridge called Flanders Crossing. The work today is also affecting the on and off ramps at Northwest Cooch. Those are both closed right now. So when the bridge is finally done in the spring, it'll connect Northwest Portland with the Pearl District and downtown. We do expect I-405 to reopen to traffic by 5 a.m. on Monday.